Hi guys, uh, this is Ravindra Reddy from Trending Technologies. Today we are going to talk about the Quarkus. It's becoming very popular um, uh, for the Java frameworks. So now if you see in our uh, the current trend, we use the Spring Boot framework uh, and the Spring Cloud for the microservice application development. And if you know, there are many drawbacks with the Spring Boot as well. So when you run your application uh, in the production or even when you build your application, it is going to consume uh, more memory. More memory. So that is uh, one of the biggest drawback with the Spring Boot. So that's the reason the Quarkus came into the picture and the same Spring Boot team is uh, working on the Quarkus to make it uh, a more effective way uh, in terms of reduce the memory for the uh, Java application. So the Quarkus is uh, basically we call as the supersonic uh, subatomic Java. So it's becoming very popular now and um, it's very easier to implement uh, uh, with the Quarkus and um, you can implement any kind of a Rust API framework. Now it is still in development and the first version is released recently and they are fixing a lot of issues but every version they are planning to make it as the production release. So that is in the uh, you know the Quarkus. And uh, we will talk about uh, how we can configure the Quarkus in your local and how we can start coding so that uh, you know you will be more familiarized um, uh, to use the Quarkus uh, for your application. Okay, so let me show you there are few things about the Quarkus. So there is an official website for the Quarkus. We have the uh, Quarkus.io. So just go to the Quarkus.io. So this is the official website you see here. So, you know, the definition for the Quarkus they given here. So, supersonic uh, subatomic Java. So, it is implemented for the Java applications. And uh, uh, other things we'll talk about later. So, in this uh, uh, tutorial, I'm going to talk about how we can configure the uh, Quarkus and uh, how we can start co coding for the Quarkus. Now, uh, so if you are a Java developer, definitely you should have some IDE. So you can use any IDE to write the coding for the Quarkus. So the only thing we need to uh, do some small configurations or even without the uh, without that configurations also, you will be able to write code, code for the Quarkus application. So now let's go to the IntelliJ. So I'm going to use the IntelliJ uh, in my local. Uh, it's very easy to set up the Quarkus uh, with the IntelliJ. The only thing you need a Java 8 plus version and uh, either Marvin or Gradle, uh, Marvin 3 plus and Gradle uh, latest version it supports. Now to install the plugin uh, with the IntelliJ, just go to the file and you will have an option called settings. So here you will find an option called plugins. So here you will find a lot of plugins with the IntelliJ. Just search for the Quarkus. So you will find an option called Quarkus here. Since uh, I already installed, you can see it is uh, showing installed. So if you are trying for the first time, you will get an option to uh, install. Just click on install and uh, apply it may take few minutes to install it. Once it is installed, uh, I would recommend you to restart your workspace and then click on OK. So that is the, the simple installation. You don't need to do any other things. So if you don't want to uh, install a lot of plugins with your workspace, you can directly go to the browser and you can uh, uh, create a project like uh, uh, Spring Boot, we have an option start.spring.io. Similar way, Quarkus is giving an option to write the coding. So you can find an option in the official website, Quarkus.io. You just click on the start.coding. So it will take you to the code.quarkus.io. You just enter all those details here. Like uh, these are the very basic details what is your group ID, what is your artifact ID, and uh, what build tool you are going to use it. 
So you can see the gradle is still in preview stage. At this point of time, is Marvin is used. So if you want, you can even go with the uh, preview stage gradle as well. And here you just need to specify what are the dependencies that you are going to use it. So that's it. And then you just click on generate your application. You will get a zip file download and then you can import your workspace. So this is a one way of writing a code uh, for the Quarkus. So this is just a, the basic application will be created for this. Now uh, go back to here. So the current version for the Quarkus is 1.2.0 and they are working on to make it more stabilized, stabilize the Quarkus application and they're enhancing, um, there are many things in the Quarkus. Now let's go to the IntelliJ, IntelliJ and um, write a simple application and see how it works. So go to the file, click on new, click on project, so here you will find a different options, Java application, Marvin Gradle, and Spring Boot Kotlin, and there are other things here. So you can find a Quarkus as well since I already installed it. So the Quarkus is going to internally, this plugin is going to use the code.quarkus.io. So if you have your own uh, a Quarkus, um, you know, the repository or the project creation uh, server, you can use the custom as well here. So at this point of time, I'm going with the default. So click on next. And uh, here you have to enter all your details. What is your group ID? So this particular project belongs to which part, which group? I'm going to create a group ID as the com.trendingtech tech. And then name of the artifact, this will be generated once the project is created. So I'll just say Quarkus Hello World. And this is the version. And uh, there will be some default class will be created that is just for the te testing purpose. I'm going to make it as the com.ravindra Hello World resource. And this is the path. So this is for, uh, for the REST API endpoint. Testing, just uh, keep it as it is hello. And then click on next. So here you have to choose uh, the dependencies, otherwise you can just click on next. So here you can give your project name. I gave as the Quarkus Hello World and where you want to create the project uh, in your local workspace. Click on finish. So click on a new window here to open in a new window. So now my project is created. So Quarkus also it is uh, similar to the Spring Boot application. You no need to run on any external server. So Quarkus internally is embedded with the server. So you no need to run it on any external server. Now, and uh, since it is going to run on the internal uh, server and it has the default port 8080, so Quarkus also will be provide, uh, provided the property file called application.properties that you can see in your uh, resources. So currently you don't have anything here. If at all, if you want to change the port, you can say uh, server.port, you will get a Quarkus uh, server HTTP port, Quarkus HTTP port. So just change the port, whatever that you want. I'll make it as 8086. Now, I go to the Java folder and at the Java, you can find a package, uh, uh, something this, and then uh, you have a, a Java file, default Java file. So here, this is the uh, default REST API. And here we have the uh, path for this particular resource is hello. And I have a simple get method, which is created automatically and uh, which will, will uh, return a basically, uh, you know, the, it produces the text uh, format. And uh, the response is going to be string and I'm just returning the hello world. Otherwise we'll say hello trending technologies. So 
so now um, the only thing you need to run this application we need to have a java so since we already have a java so just go to your terminal so you can see it's uh, since we are going to use the marvin dropper i'll say so i think uh, here it may we may need permissions let me give the permissions sudo change mode since i'm using my ubuntu so i need to give the permissions okay so now i'm going to build and run the project so marvin dropper mbnw clean install quarkus colon dev so this will build and run your application so once the application is up and running we can see the response okay it is failed because uh, uh, there is a default test case so that is creating issue because uh, it was checking for the response as hello that's the reason it is failing so let me uh, remove the test test case for now so this is a uh, causing issue otherwise uh, you now we can just make a comment here now let me run the application again so it is still causing issue better i'll remove it permanently from here So now the application is up and running. It is running on port 8086. Let's go to the browser and just uh, enter HTTP localhost 8086 slash hello. You will get the response as hello trending technologies. So HTTP localhost 8086 slash hello. So now we should get a response, hello trending technologies. So this is what uh, we are expecting here. Now, if you go and check your jar size uh, from here, so you will see the, what is the size of your jar artifact. So go to the uh, targets folder and then if you are in windows you can manually go and verify what is your uh, the artifact size uh, if you are using linux you can say ls space hyphen le so now you can see this is the runnable jar so it is uh, 19 mb so it's very smaller if we go with the spring boot application now the jar may be like around 150 mb so let's create the spring boot application as well simple application and just compare uh, the size of the application so since i already have installed the spring plugin with intellij i'm directly going with the spring assistant and next so let's make it as the default demo application and say next and i'm going to choose the uh, web project so click on finish now so new window so i'll give some port here 8086 because 8080 port might be already allocated for some other application 8086 i'm going to write a simple endpoint here so i'll make this class as the controller rest controller and i'll write a simple endpoint here public string let's say hello i'm going to return the hello trending technologies
so here you can say it's a get mapping hello now run your application so first we build we build this application and run it so we can use the maven dropper clean install spring hyphen boot colon run so this is the command to uh, run with the maven so now once the application is up and running we can see the response here so now it is about to start the application uh, now the application is going to start yeah it is started and running on port 8086 let's go to the browser and verify it so we should get the same response here right so now it is working fine let's check the memory for the spring boot application so go to the target folder and say ls space hyphen la now you have your jar you can see this application jar is 175 mb it's really very big so but our intention of the microservice application is to uh, make it as a smaller application based on the functionality and um, uh, you know we should be able to deploy uh, even with the lower memory but uh, uh, when you go with the spring boot application it consumes more memory so that is the the main uh, drawback with the spring boot application and uh, another major uh, thing with the quarkus is uh, live reload when you make some changes with your quarkus you no need to restart your server we have those features with the even spring boot as well like uh, spring boot dev tools but when you make some changes in the spring boot uh, spring boot dev tools it will kill your jvm and restart it again but in in terms of the quarkus it is not going to kill your jvm it is just going to kill the quarkus virtual machine not the java jvm so that is the main uh, advantage with the quarkus if you just want you can just make some changes on the quarkus and see without uh, uh, you know stopping and starting the server uh, your changes will be ready so that's all for uh, this particular video so if you like my video you can click on uh, uh, subscribe and you you like my video and also you can uh, uh, subscribe my channel so thank you so much for watching video. If you are looking for any live training on Spring Boot microservices and Quarkus Graal VM, so please um, uh, send me an email. Thank you so much.